Hi, it's me again, back to show you another video. This time we're going to be dealing with suction and that sound that you just heard was me just finishing off the last of a delicious smoothie. Anyways, how did I get that smoothie out of that container? I ended up using negative pressure. I generated it and drew that smoothie into my mouth through a straw. Just like suction therapy, with suction therapy you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to remove something from a patient using negative pressure negative suction pressure, vacuum pressure. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the different types of regulators and how to use a regulator and set it up for suction therapy. So the ones that we have over here, we've got a couple of regulators located on our station outlets. But you know what? It's not these net regulators that actually create that vacuum or negative pressure, that suction pressure. That's all done somewhere else way beyond these walls where there's some sort of machine that creates a whole bunch of negative pressure that we just simply use to remove secretions from the patient. What these regulators do is they regulate the pressure that we apply back to the patient. So we can control how much negative pressure or how much suction pressure is being created or used at the patient end. So for example, if you're oral suctioning out your patient, you want to use a lot of pressure, you can use the regulator to control the amount of pressure you want that patient to get. That's the whole point of the regulator. It regulates negative pressure, regulates suction pressure, so you don't cause any undue harm to your patients. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. My name is George, and I'm a respiratory therapist, a registered respiratory therapist. Anyways, let's take a look at the regulators. Now, probably you're seeing regulator A and regulator B. There's two of them on our, our uh, station outlets behind the patient's bedside, and they probably look very, very similar. They are similar, similar, but there are some slight differences between the two, and we're going to cover that. So the first one I want to look at is a real basic adjustable suction regulator. We're going to look at this one right over here. So if we could just get a zoom in on that. Now if you look at the regulator, there's a few basic features on the regulator that you need to be aware of. The first thing, we'll look at the back. It's got a diameter index safety system fitting on it. It's called a DISS fitting. You need to secure this to the wall outlet if it's not already secured by simply matching it up to the appropriate station outlet and then turning it on or attaching it to the wall outlet by just simply turning the knob here to the right. And that'll attach it firmly to the station outlet like ours are already attached. The next thing we're going to look at, we have the front. It's got the gauge. This gauge tells us how much negative pressure is being applied back to the patient. The knob underneath the gauge allows us to set the pressure we want to be applied to the patient. And then on the top here, we've got a little selector valve or a selector switch. Right now it's in the off position, which means the regulator is turned off. When you turn it to the REG or REG position like this, what that indicates is you can now set or adjust the suction pressure you want this device to control it to. If you go from regulate to off to full, what the full feature means is it automatically allows this regulator, the suction regulator, to apply full negative pressure that your suction source way beyond those walls is capable of producing. And we really don't know what exactly that is, uh, what our suction uh, device way back behind the walls is capable for uh, producing. But by simply setting this selector switch to full, you get the maximum amount of suction that the device is capable of generating. Okay, So adjustable when it's on regulate, and you can switch it to full to give you full line suction pressure, full line negative pressure back to your patient head. Okay, So if you think about it, when you've got it to regulate, it essentially means that you want to regulate or adjust the pressure you want your patient to get. And that would be specific for the different tasks you're using the regulator for. If you had it set to full, well, now you're not too concerned about what the suction pressure is the patient's going to get. You just want whatever's inside the patient or around the patient to be removed as quick as possible. And safety isn't necessarily a concern for the patient at that time. All right? So that's this basic regulator. And most of them have these features on it. Now, I said that the regulator, the second regulator, regulator B, is slightly different than this regulator. So let's take a look at that regulator. So here's the two regulators, look very similar. This is the regulators in 3D. So what's the big difference? Well, the big difference between the two regulators, other than the fact that 
regulator B has this shaded area, most of the features are the same. It's got the pressure gauge. It's got the knob for adjusting the suction level you want the patient to get. Same DISS connection for hooking it up to your station outlet. Has a selector valve at the top. You can toggle it to the uh, left. You can toggle it to the right. So what's the difference? Well, if you look at it, it says regulate, off, and then int. Int, or INT, stands for intermittent. So what this regulator allows you to do is it allows you to set or adjust your suction pressure you want the patient to get with this knob. But it also allows you to have that pressure continuously applied when it's in regulate or when it's set to intermittent. It's kind of like an on-off suction that the patient gets. The suction, when it's on interval, is applied for a certain period of time, like 8 to 10 seconds, and then it shuts off for 8 to 10 seconds. Then it goes back on for 8 to 10 seconds and then back off again. And the regulator just keeps flipping from active suctioning to no suctioning, active suctioning to no suctioning. So it's an intermittent feature. Allows suction to be applied to the patient intermittently. Where you probably see that used a lot is with gastric suctioning. So if you're using gastric suctioning and you're using a nasogastric tube or an orogastric tube that's a single channel, we like to have them set to intermittent so it doesn't cause too much damage back to the gastric lining of the stomach. Okay? So the two different types of regulators. Be aware of which type of regulator you have and uh, what features it has on it so that you can choose. Now, you notice with this suction regulator, it doesn't have the full setting. You can still get full line suction on this particular regulator by simply having it set to regulate and then crank this up as high as it goes and see if you can get the full line pressure out of it. So you can still do that. You can still have very high levels of suction with this intermittent suction regulator. Cool? Right on. There's also other types of suction regulators out there on the market. We just have a few of them in stock um, that we keep here um, for use. They all pretty much do the exact same thing. They're just slightly different in terms of color or in terms of the features. This one's a little bit different because this suction regulator here that I'm holding right now, it's got a digital display. So instead of it having a gauge on it to show you what the value of suction is, this one displays the value digitally. So, a little fancier, I guess. It's got a couple of features on the top. It just says off and regulate. So with this one, it doesn't have that intermittent function and it doesn't have the selector where it can go directly to full line suctioning. Okay. So, you'll probably notice that this suction regulator is yellow and the DISS connection behind it is yellow. This suction regulator is white, but it still has a yellow DISS connection on it. Do you know why that is? Well, in Canada and throughout most of the world, the international formula color codes things that are medical gases used in hospitals, etc. So the color coding for negative pressure, suction pressure, in Canada and the international formulary is yellow. That, so if you're ever looking at the uh, station outlets behind the bedside, you'll kind of notice we just shot down here. Here's some basic colors for our station outlets, and these station outlets have DISS connections. We've got yellow, which is suction. We've got white, which is oxygen, medical oxygen. And we've got black and white, which is medical grade air. So those are the station outlets, color codings systems for the international formula, formulary, as well as for Canada. And that's why that DISS connection is colored yellow. So you match up the yellow DISS connection to the appropriate connector, but also the color tells you as well. Right on. So if we go back over here, I'm going to show you now how to set the suction up. So we've got our suction regulator, but we also need to use in order to get suction to go back to the patient, and also to set this up correctly, is a collection unit. So you'll have to have one of these collection units. On the top of the collection units, it's got a couple of different um, uh, openings, etc. When you're setting this up and you use it, you need to have this set up appropriately. So on this, you can see it says ortho, vacuum, and patient. Essentially, vacuum means you need to hook up the tubing that comes from the regulator to the vacuum port. That's where that one goes. Patient means this is where you hook up the tubing that goes now to the patient, the suction tubing. And with the suction tubing, you would then hook up whatever apparatus you needed to be 
use to effectively suction your patient. For example, if you're going to suction your patient out orally, you would use an oral suction. We commonly refer to those as yonker suctions or tonsil suctions. Okay? So you need the suction collection unit. Make sure all the caps are on securely and that the lid is on it securely as well. Do a little check. Should have some sort of pressure relief, or not a pressure relief, sorry, a uh, float mechanism inside of it that stops the fluid contents from going into your suction regulator. It's a safety system on as well. But make sure all the caps are on there nice and secure. When it is, you can then go and place it into your um, bracket that holds the collection unit part. You can then take your tubing here. Get a shot of the tubing. The tubing attaches to the bottom of the suction and it goes to the collection unit. And then you can use the patient port to attach your suction tubing to it. So here's some suction tubing. And you can tell it's suction tubing because it's got these nice wide ends on it. It tapers down, but both ends taper to a nice wider uh, opening. So you can connect it to different types of, uh, for lack of a better term, orifices. So we'll take this, we'll attach it over here to the patient connection end. Now we just simply need to attach this to whatever device we want to use on our patient. Catheter, uh, tonsil suction, a yonker suction, oral catheter, oral suction, nasogastric tube, thoracic suction, what have you. So I'm just going to simply attach this oral suction device. Whoa. Fairly strong. Now we need to set our suction up before we uh, use it on our patient. So whenever you're dealing with secretions with a patient, Always make sure that you're wearing the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment, the PPE, that's designated for that patient with their infectious uh, precautions that they might have. It's a means of protecting yourself and a means of protecting the patient. So you should have gloves on when you're doing that. So I'll grab a pair of gloves. And let's get this set up. So I'm going to use this regulator right over here. And again, the features on this particular regulator, it's got regulate, off, and full. Right now, the regulator is set to off. So let's get this set up. Now, let's say I want to adjust this suction level to some safe value for the patient. I didn't want it to have full line. Well, all I'd have to do at that point in time is just simply grab the end of the suction tubing, turn the regulator on to regulate, and all of a sudden there's a pressure level on here. If the suction was completely off, the pressure inside the gauge would say zero. If this, so there's some suction inside the gauge, or, it's on to, or if it's turned on to a certain value, it'll also reflect that as well. Okay, So it all depends on how it was left before. We'll assume that the suction was in fact turned off. Now if I wanted to adjust this pressure up to say minus 200 millimeters of mercury, all I'd have to do is Include the suction that goes closest to the patient on the suction tubing. Set this to regulate and now just simply increase the suction pressure or negative pressure or vacuum pressure the gauge is capable of producing. I would simply adjust this to 200. Now the pressure inside the suction tubing back to the collection unit, back to the suction regulator is roughly minus 200 millimeters of mercury. That's what would be applied to the patient end. If this was too great of a pressure, simply apply, simply decrease the setting until you got the appropriate pressure reached. If it wasn't, if it uh, was insignificant, if it was too low, then simply turn the pressure up by adjusting the knob to the right, and now you can get a higher suction pressure. Okay. So let's say we adjusted it to 200. Now we can simply attach our tonsil suction and suction out our patient with our tonsil suction. This tonsil suction is meant for oral suctioning. But let's say, for example, you're suctioning your patient out and then there's a lot of secretion and you weren't concerned about the negative pressure applied at the patient end because it was oral pharyngeal or oral suctioning that you were doing. All you need to do in that particular case then is simply take the regulator from the regulate setting and flip it all the way to full. Now what we have going to our patient is full line pressure at the patient end. That's what that full feature allows you to do. Okay? So to recap, when you have it set to regulate, you can adjust the suction pressure you want your patient to get. When you've got it set to full line, automatically gives you full line pressure. Pretty easy to use. So there's not really much with that. The important thing is setting it though. Remember, when you're setting your suction level and you've got it set to regulate, 
always have it occluded and then apply or adjust the knob to get what suction level you want your patient to get. Regulate. So we'll shut this off. And we'll go over to the second regulator. This is the regulator that has that intermittent feature on it. Okay. And we'll set that one up as well. So with this one here, same idea. You want to make sure that you've got your suction collection unit firmly secured. It's checked out. All the caps are on it, which it is. The tubing from the bottom of the regulator goes to the vacuum port on the um, suction collection unit. Take your suction tubing, attach it to the appropriate port. It says patient right on there. And then grab your suction tubing at the other end, that's closest to the patient end, and set this to regulate. So when you turn it to, we'll turn it off first. Get rid of all the suction pressure first. We'll turn it to regulate. No pressure is indicated in the gauge. To adjust it to the appropriate suction pressure that you want, just simply include the suction tubing, and then turn this knob to get the appropriate pressure. And let's say we want for this particular patient 80 centimeters of water, or 80, minus 80 millimeters of mercury. This is occluded, that's set to 80. That's what's going to be applied at the patient then when we want to use it. 80, uh, minus 80 uh, millimeters of mercury. Okay? That's the negative pressure. So right now, the pressure inside the gauge is constant. That's because I have it in the regulate tab. Now to have that intermittent feature occur, all I simply have to do now is go to off, and then to interval, or intermittent, sorry. And then, you can see there's no pressure inside the regulator right now, but watch what happens. Watch what happens. Ah! The regulator goes on, suction's now being applied at this patient end, the pressure is regulated to minus 80 millimeters of mercury. It stays active for a period of time, like 8 to 10 seconds or so, and then after that happens, the suction's going to kick off, like it's doing right now, the pressure here drops to zero, or atmospheric. Okay? So it stays like that for about 8 to 10 seconds, and then it goes back on again and adjust to the same setting that you had before. And just keeps repeating that feature over and over and over again until you either A, shut the regulator off, or B, you set it to regulate, where the suction now is continuous. Okay? Now if we wanted to have a higher suction level than what we've got it set to right now, all we simply have to do is take this knob right over here and it can keep on uh, increasing the suction level to obtain the suction level we want to be applied back to the patient end. All right? So that's how you set up and use a suction regulator with a suction collection unit with some suction tubing. Now when you're not using the regulators, it is a good idea to make sure that they are set to the off position and that you turn these dials all the way to the left to get rid of any excess negative pressure that might be in the regulator. It just makes the regulator last a little bit longer. So we'll do the same thing to both of our devices. There. Suction pressure is set to zero. Okay. So in an emergency, if I really needed to use some suction uh, really, really quickly, all I have to do, all I'd have to do is make sure I've got my suction tubing hooked up, like so, and then set that to full, full line pressure right here at the patient end. Now I can suction up my patient orally or nasally. Don't use full line pressure if you're going tracheally into your patient or when you're using thoracic suction with a four bottle system. But those are discussions for later videos. So that's pretty well it for suction regulators, how they work, how to set up a suction system when you're applying it for your patients. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me and, uh, or check out my other videos that I have on my YouTube channel. I appreciate any comments that you might have or any suggestions you might have for future videos as well. And that's it. Have a great day.